Hi, and welcome back to this series of questions about African safaris. I help people connect to their divine nature and wisdom through the animals. I find this is most easily done through connecting with animals on a safari or on another wildlife adventure. So if you think that a trip is outside of your capability right now, I encourage you to get a hold of me because I can help you manifest this trip. So today's top question that I want to answer is, are African safaris ethical? And I think this is a fantastic question because my main concern is for the animals and for the earth, for the world, so that there are no injustices, no no exploitation to the animals, to the earth, to other people. A lot of African safaris might be a little bit unethical. They might not stay on the trails and the tracks they're supposed to be on. They might get a little too close to the animals. In fact, they might intentionally do something to make the animals react. And my thing is all about letting the animals stay in their natural environment and we're observing them. So we should have as little of impact on the animals and their environment and the local people as possible, except to leave it better than we came. And that doesn't mean to leave it better according to our standards. That means according to their standards, which is going to be different any place that you go. So to answer this question, there's really only a couple ways you can figure this out. And it's going to take research or it's going to take talking to someone who also is concerned about it. There are websites on the internet you can look at to see what their impact scores or what the impact are for several of the large safari groups. But because there's a lot of little, you know, mom and pop type safaris, which honestly is the kind that that I go on. It's not a huge safari company. So it would be hard to find that information. So here's what you need to do. You need to ask some very specific questions and you need to be clear in your expectations. So ask them, what do they do if all the animals are asleep? Okay. And you know what? The right answer should be they let them sleep. They should not rev their engine. They should not drive towards them. They should not do anything to make an animal react. They should not try to lure or feed any birds, any kind of wildlife at all. These cause a reliance on people at some point. They might cause a fear of people. They might cause aggression towards people, none of which are going to be great, especially if other people want to come on safari after them. So any kind of impact that your driver or your company is for the animals that you are there to see, it should be extremely minimal. Some conservancies, some of the smaller parks might limit the number of permits per day or the number of people that can go into the park. And that's a good thing, but not all of them. And that doesn't mean the other ones are bad. You just really need to to get a sense of who you're going with and how they're going to respond or treat the animals and the other people on the safari. Ask them, do you encourage your visitors to take pictures with the animals? Because that's that's a big no-no in my book. You should ask them if they ever flush out the animals by trying to drive through the bush to to make the animals scatter. None of that should be done. None of that is very ethical to me. So the questions to ask are going to be a little bit sensitive and directed specifically towards your specific safari and where you're going and the kind of animals that you're hoping to see. The bottom line for me at the end of the day is, are we able to see animals in their own environment, at their own pace, doing their own thing without causing a change in their life, without causing harm in their life, without scaring them? without doing anything to create a reaction from them. It's not ours to do that. My reasons for going on safari and for taking people on safari are to observe them in their natural state. So just check out the kind of reviews when you're thinking of going with someone. What kind of reviews do they have? Or if you're getting recommendations from people you know, or if you want to talk to someone, Just kind of think about what would be important to you about the animals and what ethics might apply to the animals. 
if the guide or company promises up close pictures, that's kind of a red flag because they shouldn't be getting that close to the animals. In some countries, they legally have to stay a certain distance away. Now, if they're parked and the animal walks up to the car, that's something different. You can't stop a cheetah from jumping onto your Jeep. And the other thing you want to consider is do you want to support a country that allows trophy hunting, big game hunting? To me, that's part of the ethics as well. That's why I like to go to Kenya. I am going to South Africa next year. I prefer to support countries that do not allow hunting of the big game because why is one lion protected in one park and allowed to be hunted and even raised to be killed in another park? So consider the countries you're going to and what their wildlife hunting policies are. I believe last I heard there were three countries that did not allow any wildlife hunting. Uh, Kenya is definitely one. That doesn't mean there's not illegal hunting. Of course, I'm not completely up to date on all the countries and the hunting, but it might be a concern for you. I have to say, I do have reservations about going to places where they allow canned, and by canned hunting, if you don't know what canned hunting is, it's where they raise animals to be hunted. So they raise the big game or, or anything to be in order to be killed, in order to be hunted. So again, what's the difference between a lion or an elephant in one park and in another park? One can be hunted and one cannot. That makes no sense to me. A life is a life. So when planning your own safari, though, consider your personal ethics and look at the reviews of the provider you're thinking of going with, the people that, that you talk to, and contact me if you want some support around this. If you have questions, if you want me to help you plan it, let me know, revcarencleveland.com, and enjoy your safari.